So last time uh, we talked about particle in a circle. Today the whole lecture is going to be developed to solve in Schrodinger's equation. Uh, this is uh, very important, has lots of applications, and begins to give you the insight that you need into the solutions. So we're going to be solving this equation all through this lecture. And uh, let me remind you what we had with a particle in a circle. The circle is the segment 0 to L, with L and 0 identified. More properly, we actually think of the whole x-axis with the identification that two points related in this way that differ by L, or therefore for 2L, 3L, are the same point. As a result, we want wave functions that have this periodicity. And that implies the same periodicity for the derivatives as well. We looked at the Schrodinger equation and we proved that the energy of any solution has to be positive or zero. And uh, therefore, the differential equation, the Schrodinger differential equation, can be written as minus k squared psi, where k squared is this quantity and it's positive, so k is a real number. Um, that makes sense. Um, and finally, once you have this equation, you know that if uh, the second derivative of a function is proportional to minus the function, the solution are trigonometric functions or exponentials, and we decided to go for exponentials that are perhaps a little more understandable, though we will go back to them. Now, that's where we stopped last time, and now we apply the periodicity condition. So we must have e to the i k x plus l equal to e to the i k x. If you cancel the e to the i k x on both sides, you get to e to the i k l must be equal to 1, which forces KL to be a multiple of pi, that is KL equal 2 pi n, of 2 pi, I'm sorry, uh, 2 pi n, where n is an integer. So those are the values of k, uh, we'll write them slightly differently. We'll write kn with a subscript n to represent the k determined by the integer n. So it would be 2 pi n over l. Now, from that equation for k squared equal to me over h squared, you get e is equal to h squared k squared over 2m. And k in these solutions uh, represents, therefore, the momentum. That is, the momentum pn is h bar <coughs> kn and it's 2 pi h bar n over L. And the energies associated with solutions with kn value is en would be um, h squared kn squared, so 4 pi squared m squared over L squared over 2m. So this is equal to 2 pi squared h squared m squared over m l squared. Well, those are numbers. It's uh, good to have them. And our solution is psi n of x is equal to e to the i, or is proportional to e to the i k n x. So far, 
so good, but we can now normalize this thing. This is the beauty of the problem of a particle on a circle. If you have a particle in free space, psi squared is equal to 1 and the integral is infinite. On the other hand, these ones are normalizable. That is, we can demand that the integral over the circle of psi n squared be equal to 1. So how do we do that? Well, I'll, I'll write it a little more explicitly here. Psi n of x will be some constant times e to the i k n x. And therefore, this thing is the integral from 0 to L dx of the constant squared. The constant can be chosen to be real. Um, n squared times psi n squared, which is um, this exponential squared is just 1. This is 1. So um, it just gives you L times N squared is equal to 1. So N squared N is equal to <laughs> 1 over square root of L. And finally, our psi N's of X are 1 over square root of L e to the I K N x or 1 over square root of l e to the 2 pi i n x over l. Oops. All right. So these are our wave functions. Um, these are our energy eigenstates. Our full stationary states, where we're finding stationary states, the stationary states have a psi of x times a time dependence. The time dependence is e to the minus i e. Um, so you could say that psi n of x and t, the full stationary state, is psi n of x times e to the minus i e n t over h bar, and that solves the full Schrodinger equation. That's our stationary state. So uh, one thing uh, that should be emphasized here is the range of the integers. n is an integer, and we better realize if there's some exceptions, maybe just the positive, is 0 included? Is 0 not included? Uh, in here, it's really as stated here. It's all the integers. n from minus infinity to plus infinity. All of them must be included. And the reason we can understand that is that the momentum of each of these states, the momentum, is 2 pi h n over L. And therefore, these are all states of different momentum. There's no question that these are different states. It cannot be that one is just the same as another one. They have different momentum. They represent a particle going with some momentum around the circle. And that momentum is quantified by n. It could be in the positive direction or negative direction. Now, you could be suspicious about n equals 0, but there's actually nothing to be suspicious about it. It's surprising. But psi 0 is 1 over square root of L, has no x dependence. And uh, therefore, it has 0 energy. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, here there's a psi missing. The second derivative of a constant is 0. And if e is equal to 0, that's a consistent solution. So <laughs> the constant is important. And uh, now you also realize that psi, you have a, a nice phenomenon, that psi minus 1 and psi 1 for example, 
they correspond to n equals 1 and minus 1, have the same energy. Because the energy depends on n squared. So these are degenerate states with energy E1 equal to E minus 1. And so are psi 2 and psi minus 2. And of course, just psi minus k and psi k. They are degenerate states. And now, this uh, hits into a property that is going to be important in the future about degenerate states. Whenever somebody gives you a couple of degenerate states, you know they have the same energy. But you must not stop there. If there are degenerate states and there are two states, it means that they're not the same. So there must be something physical about them that distinguishes them. Whenever you have degenerate states, you have to work until you figure out what is different about one state and the other. And here we got the answer. The answer is simply that there are degenerate states with a different momentum. So the momentum is an observable that distinguishes those degenerate states. In fact, uh, as we've written here, P on psi n of x is equal to Pn psi n. And Pn is given by this quantity. OK, uh, our eigenstates are orthonormal. They're eigenstates. So why are they orthonormal? Uh, they are eigenstates of a Hermitian operator with different eigenvalues. They're eigenstates of P with different eigenvalues. So they're orthonormal. The argument with the energy would have not worked out so well, because there you have degenerate states. So these two states are um, degenerate with respect to energy. So you could wonder, how do you know they are orthogonal? But in this case, it's simple. They have different momentum. Momentum is a Hermitian operator. They should be orthogonal. And uh, so the states are orthogonal. They are complete. You can write any wave function of the circle as a superposition of those psi ends. So any psi of x periodic can be written as psi of x, the sum a n psi n's over all the integers. And uh, one last remark. Uh, we could have worked with sines and cosines and uh, Therefore, we could have worked with psi k plus psi minus k. This psi k and psi minus k have the same energy. Therefore, the sum is an energy eigenstate of that same energy. The Hamiltonian acting on Psi k gives you the energy times psi k. Here, the same energy times psi minus k. So this is an energy eigenstate. And this is proportional to uh, cosine of k x. And this is an energy eigenstate you know, because two derivatives of a cosine will give you back a cosine. Similarly, psi k minus psi of minus k is proportional to sine of kx. And that's also an energy eigenstate. Both are energy eigenstates. 
So this is kind of the way you can uh, reformulate the Fourier theorem here. You could say anything can be written as a superposition of all the exponentials, including the exponential with n equals zero, which is just a constant. Or, alternatively, everything could be written in terms of sines and cosines, which is another way of uh, doing the Fourier theorem. These are energy eigenstates, but they are not p eigenstates anymore. This when you take a derivative, it becomes a sine. When this you take a derivative, it becomes a cosine. They're not energy, they're not uh, momentum eigenstates. So you can work with momentum eigenstates, you can work with energy eigenstates. Uh, it's your choice. It's probably easier to work just with momentum eigenstates. So that's it <coughs> for the particle in a circle. We have three problems to solve today particle in a circle, particle in a box and particle in a finite well.